everyone, this is Chris. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, we're going to make bookmarks. But these bookmarks are a little special. They are magnetic and we are going to use magnetic sheets. So they're not expensive at all. You can find them on a lot of craft stores or even online. And they're not really as strong as regular magnets, even though now we do tiny magnets that are super strong, but they can be dangerous for your health especially if you have a, a pacemaker or things like that. So be careful. Don't put these kinds of little, you know, the little ones. I will be doing a video with using the little magnets. It better be far away from your phone as well. But today I was cleaning up my craft room one more time. I keep on cleaning it. It's horrible. It's messy. I clean it and it's messy again within 10 minutes. Anyway, so I find these. I thought, okay, I've been having them for a while and I want to use it. I tend to hoard a little bit my thing, my paper. Oh, it's too beautiful. I don't want to use it. Oh, I found this one, but I don't find this everywhere. So I want to use up what I have. So here are some examples of the bookmarks that I just made. Uh, you can make them. It, it's completely uh, up to you how long, how wide, how big, how colorful you want to make. You can make them for men. You can make them for uh, children, for adults, anybody. Um, customize them however you want. So this one is a big one. Okay, as you can see. And I've just put some stickers that I had and I wanted to use again. Uh, this one was made out of scrap paper. I had this piece. Actually, I have two of these. They were a uh, piece of scrap paper that I used in my videos a few days ago. If you can remember, I used that paper. And I should have the other one here. So I made, I had a big, pa a big piece and I just cut it in half. Easy. This one is more for a male. You have ties, bows, and a pipe and things like that, mustaches. More male looking. Um, this is another one that is a little different. I've cut out this part and this one is about the same kind of thing. I've just built it up with different stickers and cut out a little bit of it. So when you put it in a book, for example, I'm going to take this one in a book. Um, and this book is absolutely beautiful. Let me see if there is a page that is not too colorful so you can see it. I guess I could use this one. Uh, it's not made to hold on to many pages, but this is cardstock. This is a really heavy duty paper, but it's good enough. It's to hold, if it's cardstock, it's going to hold probably one or two pages, but it's just made to be a bookmark, okay? Just to find your, your, mark, your uh, page very easily, not to hold a big, you know, big layers of paper. But look at that. This is heavy cardstock and it's good enough to, um, to mark this page. The bigger it's going to be, the better, because again, this is not a very super strong magnet. But look how nice it is from the front and on the back. I just decided to do it plain, no more decorations than that because the, the paper has a little pattern on it. But from the front, it's so cute. Uh, this one I have decorated on the back, but very, very easy. Um, this one also, which is about the same process. I've just put a little flower on it. And what I've done is I've put a paper first and then do my cutting because when you fold it, I don't want to see the black or the brown part of my magnet. Sorry for my fingers. I've been using ink and I've been washing my hands over and over again, but it's some in some places it didn't go away. Sorry, it's, I'm a crafter and I have paint or glue all over the place. I just wanted to apologize for this, but uh, so yeah, I've put a paper. I don't want this brown part to show um, on my book, okay? And what I like also is that it's not going, it's not, I just don't have the word white now, but there's nothing sticking out of my paper because sometimes when you have bookmarks with a lot of embellishments outside that are like flowers or something, they might be damaged in your bag or in your purse. This is going to be flat. So it's quite flat. It doesn't make a lot of space. It's really lightweight and it's not going to be damaged. If you want to reinforce this, you can use washi tape, for example. And this, what, this is what I've done here, uh, even though it's a little crooked, but I've used washi tape because I've creased my paper too much. And the paper I'm using here is lightweight. Um, and if you crease it, it might break your uh, your paper and you're going to see a white mark. So if it happens to you, 
just put some washi tape and it's going to reinforce it. I haven't put any paper on the magnet side, the magnet side here in my example is the shiny shine side because since it's not a very strong magnet, uh, if I was going to put a paper, maybe a thin paper would go, but never a very big, a very heavy cardstock. It would not be uh, sticking anymore. This is plenty enough, really it works well, even though this one is smaller, uh, it works really well. If you make it too small, it doesn't have the same grip, so the bigger, the better, or the longer, the better. I love this one too with the little sheep. I think it's just gorgeous. So I'm sorry, I'm just, you know, talking and talking, but I wanted to give you all these information so you know. And I will be doing more uh, again. So as I showed, this one is going to be very easy. I'm going to do about the same one with the same uh, paper here that I have left. And here, I can't make it really bigger because my paper is a, I think, six by six inch. So you need to think before cutting that you're gonna, you're gonna have to fold it and see if it's long or big enough. If it's too short, it might not work. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna use double-sided tape because uh, it's a thin paper and if I use liquid glue, it's going to make my paper wrinkle and it's not going to look nice, so I'm just going to use um, double-sided adhesive, but I would use something, I'm going to use my ATG gun. Uh, any brand will do. You will need scissors, you will need uh, a cutting mat, a ruler, and maybe an X-Acto knife, and maybe some embellishments if you really want to put on top. Okay, so first what you need to do is decide how long and how wide you want to be. So this is going to be for a man, so it's going to be, I don't want it to be too big, why not an inch and a half? There is no real science for this, so let's go for an inch and a half, which is almost four centimeters. Am I at the right place? Yes. Uh, I'm going a little over, actually, than an inch and a half. I'm adding one eighth just to have a little bit of wiggle room, and I'm going to do the same thing here. The side here, oh, it's perfect. I have the right size. And this one, this one here, I'm going to go exactly for an inch and a half. I want my paper to be slightly bigger. You'll understand why just in a second. And it cuts like butter, really. Like this. All right. You can use, again, an X-Acto knife if you want to. Now I'm going to use my double set of tape here. And I've just refilled it. If you use a lot of uh, double-sided tape, if you have big sheets, you could use big sheets. It would go even quicker. I really love the ATG gun because if you compare uh, this with the other brands, it's really economical. There's no doubt about it. It's really economical. Um, this is why I like to use it. So now I'm going to put it upside down here because it's bigger than mine. The shiny part is the, is the magnet, so be careful. And I'm going to put it just there and there. All right, and then I'm just going to trim off the excess. Um, make sure it's really well applied. Here it's a bit too big. I'm going to cut it there. And I'm also going to cut the excess here on the sides. You know what? I prefer to lose a little bit, have a little bit of waste here, which is really not much, than having to be straight and not being straight all the way long. This one is not a very long bookmark, but it's easier to have a little space to be more relaxed when you apply it, especially if you use double-sided tape. It's a bit more difficult than if you use a liquid glue because you have more time to play with it. And there you go. You have yourself a very simple 
a little magnet for man. This could go because they usually don't have, you know, depending on the man, sometimes they have uh, little books, sometimes they have a little agenda, something. Um, so you can make short ones, you can make big ones. It's really not that important. Um, we're going to do something with these two cards. I want to have this card as a... Um, as a bookmark. So this is going to be a bit too short. I want something longer and it comes in big sheets. This one is already a bit small. Uh, I think it's going to be good enough. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my background paper and I want something bright so I think I'm going to use this green. And I wanted the size of my card, something very simple. I'm not doing any fuzzy, fussy cutting on this one. So what is the size of this one? It's about two, uh, two inches and two eighths. A little smaller than that. Okay, so I'm going to take my trimmer. Two inches and about two eighths. I'm going to cut it here. And actually, I'm even using paper. You can use scraps. Absolutely, use your scraps. But I'm using paper that I don't really like for this project, which is going to be perfect. This one is okay, but sometimes, you know, there's paper you don't really like. It's a good way to use it. All right. And let me show you. This is the kind of paper I think it's hard to use because it's blank on one side and there's design on the other. I'm not crazy and these people's, uh, these papers are quite flimsy actually. So now what I'm going to do again and I'm going to put uh, glue everywhere. Um, I mean double sided tape. I'm going to cover it all. Make sure that the sides, all the sides are really well covered. Okay. Now I'm going to put my paper, I think my paper is slightly smaller, I guess. I think so. Yeah. I must have got mixed up. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that really flatten things out. I'm going to cut the excess away. You know what? They're going to be slightly bigger and I don't mind at all. I'm even going to leave a little margin on the bottom here because I like it. So I'm going to glue that one down. I'm going to make things different. I don't want to waste that big piece there that I just made. All right, let's adapt. I'm going to leave this margin there. Put my paper here. All right, and I'm going to use, I love this eraser. It's a special eraser to take, you know, all the um, adhesive away. I would recommend having these, again, if you are a scrapper, a scrapbooker, I mean, or a uh, card maker. It's sometimes very handy when you make a mistake to use this kind of uh, sticker remover or adhesive remover. Perfect. I like that one. I'm going to do about the same thing on the other side. I'm going to put it this way. First, I need to put some glue here. Yeah, I'm going to put it here. Right. Try to adapt if you make a mistake. Don't think you have to throw everything away. That would be a shame and a waste. As you know, even though it's not the first time I do this, I still make mistakes. Well, it's not a big deal. Just trying to line this up with the other card on the other side. And that's nice. That's good. There's a lot of blank here, so I'm going to fill it up with a few things that I have here and there. What could I put? 
Um, oh, I think I'm going to put a little, f a little flower. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to put a flower on this side, and I'm going to put something else on the other side. So if I want to change it, oops, and I put it upside down. My goodness, it's not my day. I'm going to put it back here. And you know what? I'm not going to edit. Make a mistake, make a mistake. Show people that you make mistakes too. It's not every day perfect. Good. Now they're perfect on both sides. And I need one more decoration here. So I'm going to have two for the price of one. And I can change the side of it whenever I want. I'm going to use this sticker here. Yeah, I think I like it this way. I want to put it this way. There you go. A pretty nice sticker. If you think it's too wide, you don't like that, you can always trim uh, the sides up. But it can be bigger. Again, if you see this one, how fast it was also to do. I'm going to try to and find something equal. And I'm going to grab my round punch. And I'm going to make it a try on this piece here. I have a scrap piece and I'm going to see if I'm going to be able to grab this or I even have a smaller piece. I have a smaller piece here. I'm not sure it's going to work. Oh my goodness, it's working like a charm. You can round it. If you have a, uh, a corner punch like this, you're going to be able to round it up. Perfect! I love it because it's better for wear and tear really. So that's something you should have in mind. I think I'm, I'm going to do that for my cheap, for this one. I'm going to do one at a time and I'm going to round this. I hope the paper is going to go well too. Yeah. Perfect. I think it's nicer when it's rounded. This one didn't work that much. Yeah, much better now. Look at that. Hey, much better. It's 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 going to have less wear and tear, I guess. And I wanted to show you this one that I have cut out here. It doesn't look that great when you look at that, this, but when you're going to put it in your book, you only see the front part. So you can cut it around. And actually, this was only one uh, sticker. So these are three stickers that I put together. And then I decided to cut it and put the uh, the back of it different. It doesn't matter. See how your paper might rip? I'm going to put some washi tape here after opening it and closing it many, uh, many times. This one can be nice. You don't have to fussy cut just a little bit. Let me show you an example we're going to do together. Okay, so I have decided I was going to use this image and I'm just making sure that I have enough space here to double it up because I need to go back. It's I have plenty of room. I'm even going to be able to trim that part down a little bit. I want to probably, I'm not going to make it too big, so I'm going to cut it over there. So I'm going to put this into my trimmer. And I'm going to open it. And I said about, hmm, what did I say? About, I think, yeah, five and a half is going to be plenty enough in centimeters. Of course, you'll adapt this to your, um, to what you are cutting. All right. And let's see, I'm still going to put some paper underneath. This is white and I might use, um, am I going to do it on a green again? I'm going to do maybe pink, why not? Oh yeah, I think it's going to be nice on pink. 
All right, so I've put already, I've trimmed my paper down. I've put my double-sided tape onto my uh, magnet this time. In my example again, the shiny side is the magnet, so don't put the double-sided tape on the wrong side of it. And I think I'm going to have to change my, uh, my blade here. It's not cutting my paper that well any longer. It is a great tool. I like the Stampin' Up! because it cuts and it scores at the same time. I really appreciate that. It's a two-in-one product. Really nice. I'm not paying to say that. I know that I have a score pal, but I have the very old version of it. And you know this one? And I don't really like that one because you here you've got some marks very close to each other, but here it's every quarter or something, and it's not that handy. I prefer the ones that have score lines every eighth of an inch and not every two eighths. That's the only thing I don't like. And it's not always easy to find measurements also in uh, centimeters. So with um with the Stampin' Up! you have it in inches and in centimeters, so I think it's it's really handy. So just check it out if you're wondering what to buy. You can buy your blades very easily. I usually buy my blades by five or six at a time because I can store them. There is a place on the back of your cutter. Um, where you can store your blades. You can store not only the blades, but you can also store the, um, the scoring tool. Okay, let me show you. For those who don't know that tool, you can extend it, of course, for a big sheet of paper. It goes up to uh, 15 inches. And here you've got a um, the blade, you've got the scoring tool. Norm normally the blade comes under. I've changed it because I, it wasn't handy for me. But honestly, you can change these very easily, change these, and you can also change that part and clean it up or turn it around if you need to. I've got a spare one. I haven't used it yet. Really, I don't need to. And the blades do last a long time. Okay, again, I'm not sponsored and I'm not paid by Stampin' Up! I'm just wanting to share something that works for me if, it was, if you were looking for something as well for you. So, gosh, I cut it just exactly I was supposed to. So I'm going to glue that baby down now. Again, using my uh, double-sided tape. If you want to use foam adhesive for this, you might want to. I don't want to do something too thick. And I might use just a tiny little bit of glue for the paws here because I can't go there. It's too small. But, and this is heavy card stuff, so I may not have the, you know, the wrinkly problem, which I don't like. I don't like when paper wrinkles. That's why I usually don't or hardly ever use liquid glue with paper. All right, I'm going to put it there. Perfect. And now what I'm going to do and I'm going to use small scissors for this. You can use an X-Acto knife if you prefer. And I'm going to cut around this. Okay. And I'm going to not cut completely. And I'm going to leave a space behind there. I'm going to cut it around. And it's going to be pretty simple. I'm not trying to fussy cut in any way. I don't like to fussy cut. Fussy cut. And anyway, you know what? I have a cutting machine. I could have done this with it. Um, I have bought the Cricut Maker. In the beginning, I wanted to buy the um, Scan and Cut, which I think is a great machine. But where I used to live, there was none. And almost impossible to order online to that country. But they had the Cricut maker and it's absolutely excellent and I believe that it does more things than what the scan and cut do but it's basically the same honestly and now I'm gonna go straight and actually what I'm gonna do first is put that back in here 
and I'm going to recut it exactly at the same spot. I'm going to do it on this side now. Alright, so I've cut out to the other side of my magnet and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a straight line from this piece to this piece to have all to cut out all this space. Which is supposed to be more or less at the same spot. Oops. Okay, I'm going to have to do this. Let me see. Yeah. I'm going to change this just a tiny bit. There you go. All right. So now back and on the t uh, on the front and on the back, it's exactly the same. You don't have to do this. Uh, what I would do probably is invert this picture and scan it and then put the picture on the other side. Just you need to do that inverted. Otherwise, if it's this in the same direction, it won't fit. But you will have another very nice way of doing a magnet. It took a bit more time. Maybe you don't want to fussy cut this way, even though I don't call it really this fussy cutting because it's so easy, but it's really cute. Look at that. Okay, and it hangs on. Well, this is a bit heavy. Uh, let me use this one. And I need to fold it. If you want to put something on top of his head, you could put maybe a little star. And as you can see, it's not going anywhere. Yeah, a little star on top would look nice. And I think it's very original. Not everybody's going to have the same magnet for sure and the same bookmark. And you could do that for craft fairs. You could do a whole bunch. If you're doing that for craft fairs, go quick. Do something easy. Uh, use simple shapes. This one was more intricate, but use simple shapes. If you really want to cut around, you could use a bouquet like this. This way you could use it in, uh, uh, on the other side. You can print off your own uh, paper. I'm going to show you all uh, the, books mar the bookmarks that I've done. I'm going to put this one back together. I think it's going to be nicer. So I have this one. I have this little baby here and this one and this card and oh I have this one too, the owl and I think and I have these two also that I just made out of scrap piece of paper and I have this more men like uh, these two actually oh do I have enough space to show you all of this I think so there you go, and this one as well. Let me put this here. Yeah, I think it's great. So I hope you really enjoyed it, and it will give you some ideas for your friends, uh, a little gift to give to someone you like. It can be, um, you know, a work pal or something, and people will appreciate that you did something just for them. So please give me some thumbs up. If you have any questions or if you just want to come and say hello, please leave your comments below. I will answer you back, of course. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button and share on social medias, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, and all the others that you like to use. Thank you so much for uh, being with me and sticking with me every week, and see you soon for other tutorials, and take care. Bye-bye.